Have you ever had a bully in your workplace? Maybe you didn't think about them as a bully, but they were a difficult person. You walked on eggshells around them. You weren't certain what mood they'd be in when they came in. They took up way too much of your energy. Maybe you went to work for a company and you were really excited and just days later it started. The bully at work started showing her colors, defining her territory, and stomping the ground. You know, like bullies do. And you thought, help, I thought it was going to be so good, so what do I do? And yes, I said her, but it could easily be he. It doesn't really matter. We expect bullies on a school playground, or we hear about it as part of gang behavior or prison even. But unfortunately, it's an all too common complaint in the workplace. When I'm hired by a company now as a consultant, but previously I would do more hands-on work, the task often entailed managing the bully, that hostile, aggressive person who was running as rampant as a rhino. And of course, people brought me in because I wrote a book called Wrestling Rhinos, Conquering Conflict in the Wilds of Work. So recently I met a rhino who introduced herself to me in the initial interview as I'm a harsh personality and I can be hard on people. Whoa, I'm really, my I, my ears perked up. I'm sure my jaw dropped open. And, and it wasn't from the self-knowledge this woman displayed, but rather from her blatant admission that she was aware of it and she seemed completely uninterested in doing anything to improve her approach. She was kind of proud of being a bully. And like people so often do, It seemed she thought that announcing to me that she was a bully was a way of giving herself permission to act like one. And if you walk around thinking of yourself as a harsh personality like she did, you're very likely to demonstrate it on a regular basis. And she did. This woman, I'll call her Leslie, she had a few traits you might recognize. The first day I was in the company, she stalked up to my desk. Uh, I was the general manager, acting general manager at the time. She maintained eye contact all the way as she approached me. And then she demanded, what are you going to do about reconfiguring the office? When I responded that it was under consideration and would be happening soon, but not immediately, she asked again. And then I said the same thing. She got the same answer, so she rolled her eyes and walked away. Over a few weeks of seeing Leslie roll her eyes and dismiss people with a wave of her hand or hear her backbiting sarcasm and her definitely know-it-all responses and watching her hostile, aggressive behavior and its effect on the office, there was no possibility that the behavior could go unchecked. It was toxic to the productivity and to the health of everyone, me too, as well as to the profitability of the company. And of course, there was a problem. Nothing could be as simple as simply firing Leslie. The owner of the company didn't want to fire her because she believed she brought a unique combination of experience and expertise to the company, a classic dilemma in small companies. It was all too frequent that a person with no regard for either co-workers or the company holds too much information, and the boss comes to think of them as indispensable. And all the while, that person is holding everyone else hostage. That's a big mistake. I mean, I saw people who would take a sick day when they'd had enough of her overbearing nastiness. There's only so much people can take. So productivity suffered, clients were lost. The cost of keeping such an individual employed were just getting too high. And it was compounded because when a person takes a sick day to get away from Leslie, who does the work? Of course, everybody else is supposed to pick up the slack, but no, of course, that wouldn't be Leslie. She refused to have her workload enlarged for any reason. So listening to her with customers, it was a lot of phone work, and it was not a surprise to learn that what the owner thought of as her hard-nosed negotiating was simply bullying, and there's a big difference. 
Although we often think of bullies as big people dominating smaller folks, they truly are little people in every way. A bully at work is habitually cruel to other people that they think are weaker than themselves. A bully, he'll use browbeating language and behavior. He'll even use his size to get up too close and personal with people to intimidate them. But here are some insights into what's going on with bullies. All bullies, and in particular, these ones that I was working, this one that I was working with, um, but all bullies have a fear of being wrong. And so they demonstrate that by being know-it-alls. So they're often condescending and patronizing and dismissive. They also have a fear of not being able to meet the needs of others, and it causes them to never want to hear what other people think, feel, or want. They, they have an inability and an unwillingness to control their anger or their tongue, in Leslie's case, and it causes them to make everything your fault as it couldn't possibly be theirs is this beginning to sound a little familiar? Maybe somebody in your workplace. It may be somebody in your family. So paradoxically, their self-esteem is too fragile to handle the possibility of being wrong. And their need to control you demonstrates their fear of being unable to control themselves. And this overreaching desire for power over other people comes from a fear of being insignificant themselves. So their attempts to boost their own flailing self-esteem is fed by treating other people disrespectfully or thoughtlessly or offhandedly. And their fear of other people causes them to assault character and focus on weaknesses and be the poster child for intimidation. And unfortunately... These are all manifestations of a poor self-image, kind of coupled with a lack of self-awareness and very, very poor people skills. So the question was, what did I do about Leslie? So a good beginning when handling a bully is to begin with compassion. And that might be the last thing you're considering. <laughs> you may not be thinking about compassion, but you you just kind of truly want to beat them over the head with a blunt object and maybe considerable force. But <laughs> beginning with an understanding of that inherent weakness that the bully is projecting and the causes for it will help you manage them. And bullies need to be managed because they can't and won't manage themselves, yet everybody shies away from managing them. So they're like errant teenagers. They're just allowed to run wild. And no one wants to say no to them because the consequences are nasty. And that's the operating system of the bully. Don't cross me or I'll make your life miserable. They're miserable and they want everybody else to go down with them. So bullies appear self-confident, strong, impervious because they intimidate weaker people. And they may even be so blind to their arrogance that they try to intimidate anyone as Leslie did with me. Not such a great move, Leslie. So if you vacillate, placate, or submit to a bully, or you respond with fear or rage, she feels like Leslie did. She felt her point was proven. You are inferior and you deserve to be abused or taken down or written off. So you have three choices when you're working with a bully. You can quit, you can get sick, or you can manage yourself with the bully. Unless, of course, you own the company and you can get rid of them. So here are some tips for managing a bully. And, and really listen to these because you want to feel that you are not lacking knowledge. And you want to feel empowered to step up. So here's some tips. Redeem your own self-esteem and establish strong boundaries. That's the only way to gain the respect of a bully. And then just be friendly and self-confident and calm. Never cower, never avoid eye contact. Just be fully present. And it doesn't help to walk into a brick wall, so avoid a clash of wills. Keep things at the information level, not at the emotional level. 
listen to them well. It doesn't cost you anything. And you can agree with him or her in part. You'll find something you can agree with and then put forward your views clearly. You want to be strong and firm and assertive without being aggressive. And you want endeavor to get the bully to consider alternative views and avoid directly challenging him or her. So that means you have to be prepared before you talk with the bully. You have to know what your desired outcome of the conversation is and stay focused on that. And then be willing to acknowledge when the bully is right. A bully respects your ability to see his or her strengths. I know it's counterintuitive, but if you do these things, listen to them again, replay this part, and if you do this, you will feel more empowered, you will feel stronger and more confident. Because anger and threats and harassment, humiliation, ridicule, these are all tools of a workplace bully or a bully anywhere, just like they are on the playground. That woman, Leslie, she majored in all four had more. I'm sure she did. She was just had this incredible delight in her ability to intimidate. And that joy that she took in having those around her dread the possibilities she would erupt gave her power. She felt powerful. And unfortunately, no one was contradicting her until I came along. So if you have a Leslie on your team, be assertive. And if you need to shore up your conflict and anger management skills, do so. The workplace is no place for a bully because the cost is too high. So don't let it take a toll on you so that you're the one who's paying the cost. And if you want a bunch of insights how to do this, just go to Amazon and get a copy of my book, Wrestling Rhinos, Conquering Conflict in the Wilds of Work. And also visit my website at For Relationship Help. Lots of things there for you. And also my YouTube channel, For Relationship Help. I hope this helps you. Talk soon.